Cyprus has always been at the crossroads between Eastern and Western civilization. However, never in its history has it offered hospitality to people from so many different cultures, from all the corners of the earth, as it does today. The pictures you are looking at have all been filmed in modern Cyprus. Within the small geographical area of this island in the Eastern Mediterranean, small or larger communities of every religion and national origin flourish. One of the basic characteristics of the globalized economy and diminished distances is the movement of peoples in all directions. On the one hand, there are those who migrate permanently or temporarily, seeking better living and working conditions. On the other, there is the international character of business activity that inevitably leads to the creation of new communities. These, in turn, bring their own traditions and customs, create their own social cohesion networks, while at the same time, they're trying to adjust to and become part of modern life in Cyprus. Until a few decades ago, Cyprus was basically an agricultural community that survived on the fringes of the British Empire. Despite the fact that Cypriots had one of the highest levels of education in relation to other colonies, nevertheless, the large majority of its population lived in poverty. They managed, however, through the centuries to hold on to their land, and once they were given the opportunity, they were able to prosper. Therefore. With independence and the establishment of the Republic of Cyprus in 1960, Cypriots were called to govern their country alone as a modern state. In its 50 years of existence as an independent state, Cyprus was transformed from an undeveloped colony to a modern European country with a multifaceted developed economy. Despite the huge political problems it had to face, Cyprus managed to develop to an enviable degree, with its financial indexes improving year after year. It developed strongly in sectors such as shipping, transport, services and manufacturing. Of course, being a small country, without important raw materials and without the tradition and the experience of other countries, it did not develop heavy industry. The construction industry, and of course, tourism, constitutes the foundations on which the economy of modern Cyprus was built. Another important characteristic of modern Cypriot society is its high educational level with 30% of its active population being university graduates. It is one of the highest percentages in Europe. The establishment and operation of universities and institutions of higher and tertiary education gave a new impetus to the financial, social and cultural development of the country. The culmination of this course was Cyprus becoming a full member of the European Union in 2004. It is an event of historic significance. A small country that until a few decades ago was simply an insignificant colony acceded to the great European family. Cyprus's European course was completed in 2008 when it adopted the euro as its currency. 
Today, Cyprus is the most easterly point of the European Union and operates to a large extent as the gateway to the east. Furthermore, the average Cypriot in character and behavior may be described both as a European of the East and as an Oriental European. This double identity defines Cypriots as people with sensitivity that others who do not have this peculiar relation with both aspects of the modern world would have difficulty in understanding. In addition to the two official recognizable communities, Greek that constitutes the largest majority of the population and Turkish as well as the Maronite, Armenian and Latin religious groups, people from all corners of the earth live in Cyprus today, giving the island's social life a cosmopolitan character. This multicultural character of Cyprus is not something new. A characteristic example is the coexistence of the Christian world and the Muslim element for centuries. This coexistence and mutual respect continue to exist even today in the areas that are controlled by the Republic of Cyprus. And this despite the country's huge political problem. The first signs of human presence on the island come from the first Neolithic era around the 10th millennium, whereas during the Neolithic era of around 8,000 to 7,000 BC, the first settlements were developed which were scattered around the entire island. These communities developed farming and cattle breeding and constructed the first houses from stone and mud bricks. The Neolithic settlement at Hirokitia is the first known form of civilization in Cyprus where we have a well-organized and developed community. This settlement is the most important prehistoric site in the eastern Mediterranean. The discovery of huge deposits of copper mark the passing from the Neolithic to the Bronze Age. The trade in copper and other products brought Cypriots into contact with neighboring peoples. Within the following centuries, Cyprus would receive the influences of many cultures from the East and the West, rendering it a true cultural crossroad. The most important influence in this era was the Mycenaean civilization. One may trace the Mycenaean civilization's influence in the ceramics of the last period of the Bronze Age, in jewelry making and architecture. It is within this period, from 2700 to 1500 BC, that the first towns, such as Engumi and Kition, are established. They become significant financial and commercial centers in the area. They are, however, the centers of coexistence of the various cultures that spread and develop on the island and which prosper among the native population. Very often, these civilizations coexisted for large periods of time in various areas of Cyprus and even within the same towns. It was an era of achievement and prosperity. The period that follows, the Iron Age, is linked with a series of historical occurrences of war, invasion and colonization. The culture of Cyprus is a recipient of the influence of the Phoenician, Assyrian, Egyptian and Persian civilizations. However, the main characteristic of this period is the island's gradual Hellenization. Ishtar, the goddess of ancient Mesopotamia, turns into Astarte in Syria and in Palestine in order to be Hellenized during this era, and according to Homer, to rise from the Sea of Cyprus 
as Aphrodite. From then on, the worship of Aphrodite in Cyprus would take various forms. There are written references that until at least the end of the 19th century, the festival of Cataclysmos, that is still celebrated today in the coastal towns, was called the Feast of Panagia Aphrodite. As the Greek element gradually prevails, the history of Cyprus during the Hellenistic period follows, corresponding paths with that of the rest of Hellenism, whereas the Roman period subsequently leaves its own profound marks on the entire island. It is during this period that a large part of the Greek population becomes Christian through the apostles Paul and Barnabas, the latter considered to be the founder of the Church of Cyprus. It is one of the ancient Christian churches and its establishment dates back to 57 AD. However, at the same time, there was a large and thriving Jewish community which was persecuted in 117 AD after its participation in the uprising against Rome. Despite all this, the Jewish element remained in Cyprus at least until the Arab raids of the 7th century AD. Today, the Jewish community in Cyprus numbers no more than a few hundred most of whom are from Israel, the United Kingdom and Russia. The Muslim element is introduced in Cyprus during the troubled Byzantine period. The Hala Sultan Taqe in Lanaka was built where Umm Haram, the aunt of the Prophet Muhammad, fell off her mule and was killed. After the Arab raids of the 7th century AD and for 300 years, Cyprus is jointly ruled by the Byzantines and the Arabs. Later, with the schism between the churches in 1054 AD, the Christian church in Cyprus is led to the bosom of orthodoxy. But even after the schism, there were Catholic Christians on the island. In 1191 AD, the King of England, Richard the Lionheart, within the scope of the Third Crusade, takes over the island and brings an end to Byzantine rule thus opening a new chapter in the history of Cyprus. Within the next nearly four centuries, Cyprus would successively pass through the rule of the Lucinians, the Franks, kings of the East, and also through the Venetians and the Genelans. The Franks establish the kingdom of Cyprus, and Latin becomes the official language of the kingdom, followed by French later on. In 1196, the Latin Catholic Church of Cyprus is established, which coexists for many years with the Orthodox Church. The Franks are succeeded by the Serene Republic of Venice. It is in this period that the town of Amokostos prospers as the administrative and commercial center of the island. Historical sources state that in the 14th century, Franks, Italians, Greeks, Jews, Syrians and Armenians lived in the town. They lived in a cosmopolitan environment where the various nationalities competed in the building of churches. There is no other place in the world with as many churches in such a small area. During the Crusade period, Maronites from Syria and Lebanon settle in Cyprus. It is a religious group with a continuous presence on the island with its own particular traditions and customs. Even though it is a relatively small religious group, it still flourishes even today. It is a religious group with great cohesion and strong social activities. Its members, and in particular the elders, continue to speak the Aramaic language and are Catholic Christians. Guys, guys, The Maronite religious group, together with the Armenian religious group and the Latin community, the descendants of the Catholic inhabitants of the island at their own choice, constitute the religious groups within the Greek Cypriot community. Although very small in size in comparison with the Greek community that represents 80% of the population, 
and the Turkish community that officially represents 18%. These three religious groups are safeguarded in the constitution of the Republic of Cyprus. And a special constitutional ruling allows each group to elect its own representative in the House of Representatives. The Cypriot state places particular emphasis on providing equal opportunities in education for children, irrespective of ethnic origin, descent or religious affiliation. The creation of schools of educational priority in areas with a strong multicultural character mainly aims to help the children integrate smoothly into the country's social life. Αν αγοράσω ένα κουτί, πατάτες. Πατάτες τηγανιτές από το εστιατόριο. Πόσα περίπου θα πληρώσω. Immigrants also attend these schools together with Greek Cypriot pupils. Children of gypsies and Turkish Cypriots also attend some of these schools and their mother tongue is also taught to them. Ένα, γλυκό, ένα ενενήντα Even though Cyprus has always been a multicultural society, the educational sector has always remained strictly within the ethnic scope of every community. Today, all schools host children from every nationality. It is a new reality to which the state reacted and adjusted successfully. With the fall of Amahostos in 1571, Cyprus falls into the hands of the Ottomans. The Latin ruling class is basically eliminated. In contrast, the Ottomans grant privileges to the Greek Orthodox Church, which would finally become the main Christian dogma. As was expected following Cyprus's takeover by the Ottomans, the Muslim element is strengthened with the settlement of families from every part of the Ottoman Empire, mainly from Anatolia. Today's Turkish Cypriot community has its roots in this period of history. The Ottoman rule lasts about 300 years, that is, until 1878, when Cyprus is granted to the United Kingdom, which, after the First World War and Turkey's defeat, annexes it as a crown colony. In 1960, Cyprus acquires independence after the armed struggle of the Greek Cypriots against the British. will hear the salute of guns which will mark perhaps the most important event in the whole long history of Cyprus. Tonight you go to sleep in a British colony. Tomorrow you wake up in an independent republic. The Greek Cypriots struggle for union with Greece, which preceded independence. And the idea of partition that started to develop in parts of the Turkish Cypriot community led to inevitable violence. Independence was the only feasible solution. Despite the difficult years that followed, the coup of the Greek junta and the Turkish invasion in 1974, the Republic of Cyprus managed to survive and develop. The institutions and the operation of the state have no reason to be envious of the other developed countries of the European Union. Similarly, to all European countries, small Cyprus, with a population of around 800,000, is living in an unprecedentedly transformed society. As a result of globalization and permanent or temporary migration from third countries, Cyprus is the recipient of new influences from cultures not only neighboring, but far apart.
The lack of a labor force in specific sectors of the economy led to the import of labor from countries such as Sri Lanka, the Philippines, China, Georgia, Syria. The result is the creation of many small ethnic communities that become attached to the traditional ethnic communities of Cyprus and create a multifaceted puzzle. Naturally, the predominant culture is a Western one, which tends to eliminate the traditional local cultures. However, the free exchange of information, capital and people also leads to a complete change in the ties that bind every society, and in particular, small societies such as Cyprus. This change is obvious in every aspect of human activity, from the economy to labor relations to the changes in customs and way of life. Up until a few years ago, a Buddhist ceremony in the heart of Nicosia was something inconceivable. Today, however, this is part of daily life, a daily life very different to that of previous generations. Cyprus today is also an important international business center with a multitude of large companies from all over the world keeping their head offices here. Many of these companies are European. A large number are of Russian interests and employ a large number of Cypriots and Russians who have settled on the island with their families. Russians are now a part of a special and very lively community in Cyprus, which has its own radio station and cable television. The Russian business community in Cyprus has increased in the last few years, and today it numbers a few thousand. A large majority are settled in Limassol and now constitute an integral part of the economic, cultural and social life of the town. It is one of the most active communities in the town and has its own Orthodox Church. Quite a few decide to settle permanently in Cyprus. The multifaceted development of the Russian community also extends to the sector of culture and art. The artistic events organized by the community supplement and enrich the already vibrant cultural life of Cyprus. Once again in its history, Cyprus acts as a bridge between cultures with its multi-ethnic puzzle, comprising dozens of small pieces, historical communities, businesses, migrants and foreign workers from every corner of the earth. If to all this a series of other factors are added, such as tourism that brings several hundreds of thousands of European tourists every year, the communal workers who choose to settle in Cyprus, the large number of mixed marriages and the communities of foreign students, this puzzle becomes even more complicated. A puzzle in which the traditional Cypriot and the new and until recently entirely unknown cultures look for another way to coexist. The intercultural dialogue both on an institutional and social level, has just begun. What is sought is a formula that would lead to mutual understanding and respect. On the one hand, people from other cultures must learn to respect the institutions and the customs of the country that hosts them. And on the other, Cypriots must understand that their future and that of their children depends to a great extent on the respect that they show today to these people.